Today we'll be getting into a big heel turn that's being teased. Big in-ring return for a superstar who hasn't competed for a year and much more. Let's start things off with this big unexpected heel turn that's being slowly teased. This heel turn, of course, being at least one member of the New Day, or possibly the both of them. The New Day is up there as one of the most successful tag teams in WWE history. The longevity of their team, all of the championship gold they've won, and so much more that they've accomplished, there's no doubt on their success. Kofi Kingston even becoming WWE champion while they were still a team, and they didn't turn on each other or turn on Kofi to go after the title. They all remain loyal. But now, it seems like something is being teased for the New Day's direction. Big E is still technically part of the faction, but he's doing his own solo thing on SmackDown. Kofi and Xavier Woods are still holding things down as a tag team, but there's just this feeling around them that something is up. The main mastermind behind this possible conflict is MVP. MVP's character is most definitely up there with Roman Reigns and others for being so perfectly manipulative. MVP's character is able to easily get into superstars' heads and just make them question things and wonder about several topics. That's basically how the Hurt Business got started. MVP looked around, targeted a few stars, and talked them into joining him. Of course, his big score was Bobby Lashley, who was being managed by Lana at the time. MVP's main message to Lashley at the time was that he's never going to get where he wants to be with Lana by his side and that he had to get rid of her. After Lana started to cost Lashley several big matches, Lashley started to realize that MVP was right and left Lana to join MVP. Then of course, Shelton Benjamin and Cedric Alexander came later on with similar narratives. MVP told them if they want to go to the next level, this is their opportunity, and they most definitely took that opportunity. So why is that all relevant today? Well, it's relevant because it appears that's what MVP is trying to do here with Kofi Kingston. Kofi is, of course, a former WWE champion, the only member from the New Day to ever win a world title. Kofi also main evented Raw a few weeks ago in a great match with Drew McIntyre. Kofi also pinned WWE champion Bobby Lashley not so long ago, but that didn't really go anywhere. So similar to what MVP did to Bobby Lashley last year, He's telling Kofi that he needs to cut Xavier Woods off, that Xavier is holding him back from reaching his full potential. MVP mentioned how Kofi is going to go home as a loser without even being pinned in these tag team matches with Xavier Woods. He also mentioned how the New Day is not even on the card for Hell in a Cell and made fun of them for that as well. So what is MVP trying to really accomplish here? He's been having these talks with Kofi backstage for several weeks now. There has to be a payoff of some sorts coming soon, but what could it be? Well, it doesn't look like MVP is trying to do anything malicious. It could actually be the opposite. This is probably his strange way of recruiting Kofi Kingston. Maybe he sees the wasted potential of Kofi and wants to bring him to that next level like he did with Bobby Lashley. But Kofi doesn't really see the need for it because he's brothers with Xavier Woods and he's been WWE champion before without MVP's existence. So, Kofi doesn't really see the point in joining MVP, and understandably so, but if these conversations and stories continue, something has to happen. Does MVP's words finally get to Kofi, and he turns on Xavier Woods during a big moment? We've seen Kofi as a heel for brief moments with the New Day, but Kofi has never really had a big singles run as a heel. So, could this be that opportunity? Or maybe there's a big twist. Maybe Kofi stays loyal, but Xavier Woods starts to get influenced by some other things that MVP was saying, and he's the one that turns on Kofi first. That would be sort of unexpected since the narrative they seem to be pushing right now is that Kofi would be the one to turn. So what if it turned out to be Xavier? Not to mention that WWE planned for Xavier Woods to leave the New Day around last spring. Xavier Woods was rumored to be one of the three SmackDown hackers. One of his arguments would be that Big E and Kofi Kingston forgot about him during his time away from the ring with his injury. So, they have at least considered an Xavier Woods turn in recent history. But it does appear like this is one of those stories to keep an eye on over on Raw. Who do you think would turn first between Kofi and Xavier? Speaking of things to keep an eye on, it appears that Sonya Deville 
could finally be making her return to the ring soon. Sonya Deville last competed nearly a year ago at SummerSlam during a Loser Leaves WWE match with Mandy Rose. Sonya lost the match but never really left WWE. It was just their way of writing her off for some personal matters she was dealing with at the time. They brought her back several months later in a new role of being a WWE backstage official and assistant to Adam Pearce. However, it doesn't seem like she's an assistant anymore. It sort of feels like they at least tried to split the power now. But it doesn't seem like Sonya will be a WWE official forever. Sonya was recently spotted training in Natalya's gym recently, and reports claim that her in-ring return is something that has been talked about recently. Apparently, it was supposed to happen sometime shortly after WrestleMania, but kept getting delayed. We saw some teasers where it appeared that maybe Alexa Bliss was targeting Sonya Deville and could have led to her in-ring return, but that didn't go anywhere either. Sonya has gotten on the nerves of several superstars on the roster in recent weeks with some of her decision making, especially when it comes to Charlotte Flair. Sonya will do just about anything for Charlotte Flair without question, and that has already caught the attention of superstars like Rhea Ripley. So, if Sonya continues this thing of granting Charlotte her every wish, will someone like Rhea Ripley put an end to it by challenging Sonya to a match? Something like that could work. You also have the Mandy Rose narrative that they briefly touched on a few months ago. Sonya Deville is now a WWE official and is supposed to be unbiased, but Mandy Rose is the one who won, who made her leave WWE after last year's SummerSlam. So, does Sonya hold a grudge there? Sonya did book Mandy Rose vs Charlotte, where Mandy was absolutely destroyed, so many understood that as Sonya's way of getting back at Mandy. So is Sonya serious about being a WWE official, or does she have a much bigger agenda? Either way, Sonya is training for an in-ring return, so it's happening soon, we just have to wait and see what this story will be to get Sonya back in the ring. Omos is currently dominating on Raw as WWE's new giant. With the insane speed and athleticism for his height, he most definitely demands your attention when he's on screen. But things were very scary for Omos during his college years. A new article from The Athletic reports that he nearly was blinded due to a tumor on his pituitary gland. Thankfully, everything turned out well for him due to two separate brain surgeries that cleared the issue up. So a very scary situation for one half of the Raw Tag Team Champions, but everything turned out to be perfect in the end, and it led him to where he's at today as one of the most promising big men in WWE. Omos definitely has an even bigger WWE future ahead of him, so we'll have to keep a close eye on him, no doubt about that. But what are your thoughts on today's stories? Leave your comments. Don't forget to subscribe with all notifications on, and leave a like if you enjoyed. Thanks for watching, guys.